All right, so here we are once again, ready to get started on our third class for this module. So welcome everyone, welcome to our lesson. Good evening, Connie. Uh, welcome to another experience and another chance to learn something new. So I hope you guys are doing amazing. I hope you had an amazing day. Tonight we are going to be, um, well, we're gonna continue covering some of the great topics that we have on storage. And uh, well, I think that the adverbs have already been, you know, covered. I think like we already understand how to use them and when to use them. So now we're going to continue with one of those topics that is kind of similar, but it's not necessarily the same, which is conjunctions. Conjunctions are used to basically establish a connection between um, two different ideas. Okay, maybe two different sentences. But um, that's going to be like part of the main thing that we have for this evening. We're going to be talking about that, about conjunctions and uh, when or how to use them. So, yeah, um, yesterday we left pending the conversation, which means that maybe, maybe tonight we're going to do two conversations at a time. Because, yeah, we have the conversation from It's a Fairly Big City pending and tonight we are also going to be looking at another conversation. Um, and also we are going to have like a, a short stop on adverbs of power. Okay. Because, yeah, we also have that, um, which basically refers to like the scale in which we're going to use, you know, the adverbs that we don't normally know. However, for this evening, we have a question. And the question for tonight is, well, about something that we all like, I think, and it's food. So tonight, I want to know what is your favorite food? So that's basically what we're going to be talking about tonight. Now, just take this into consideration. I don't only want you guys saying pupusas, for example. No, go farther and beyond. If you like pupusas, which is, for example, my case, go ahead and say, oh, I like pupusas, but I like revueltas. I like beans and cheese ones, and um, I like them from this specific restaurant. I like pupusas better when I have them with a cup of hot chocolate, for example. That's my case. I enjoy pupusas a lot more if I have them with a cup of hot chocolate and sun milk. Um, that's like my, my cup of tea, my favorite way of having pupusas. And uh, if they are from Oloquilta, even better. So yeah, that's what I want to know. I want to know about your favorite food, but with details, okay? Tell me details. Tell me what's the thing that likes you the most about, or that you like the most, sorry, about your favorite food. So let's get started. And I think we're going to start by hearing from maybe David tonight. So David, in your case, what is your favorite food? And of course, what is the difference? Or like, what is the, the, the detail that you like about your favorite food? David Vasquez, that would be. <laughs> Hello, Carlos David. Okay, seems like uh, we cannot reach him right now. How about then Edwin? In your case, Edwin, what is your favorite food? And what is the detail that you have to share with us about that? Hello, good evening. Uh, I don't know uh, that is correct, but uh, I I think it's like a stuff of pepper. Mm -hmm. uh, it's correct? Stuff pepper, yes. Stuff pepper. Uh, but I like that food without egg because basically many people a uh, prepared stuffed paper with egg, mm -hmm. but I don't like stuffed paper with egg. Oh, okay. Great. That's a nice detail to know. So, yeah, actually, you know, it's funny. I don't know if you know Oscar Mesa or La Capital, a guy that makes videos about food from YouTube. Have you ever no. watched any? No? Okay. So he makes some great videos. Mostly, you know, his, his deal is with meat. He loves to eat meat. So um, last night I was looking at a video that he made about stuffed um, peppers with uh, 
tuna fish. So yeah, it was it was with fish, not with uh with like you know um grained uh meat. But um he was saying that many people in Mexico because he's Mexican prepare them without egg, as you say. So the like the basic preparation that they do is without the egg. But in his case, he likes it the other way. He likes it with egg. He prefers yes. to have his salt pepper with egg. He mentioned a different name. Like here, we simply call them relleno, right? But he used to he yes. used a, a different way to refer to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, he was talking about that. So yeah, it's it's kind of cool, and it's one of the greatest foods you know that we have also in our cuisine. So pretty good detail. Okay, thank you very much, Edwin. Thanks. How about in the case of um, Flor? How about you, Flor? What is your favorite food? And what is a detail about you when you have your favorite food? Uh, la comida, ¿verdad? Sí, su comida favorita. Yes. Y, y algún detalle que usted conozca acerca de usted misma cuando come su comida favorita. Uh, I like the lasagna. Um, um, and... I also like the green wraps mm -hmm. and the chicken. Okay. And, Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Pretty cool. So, in your case, so you like lasagna and, and chicken. And chicken. Chicken. Okay. So, when you have lasagna, what drink do you like to have? ¿Qué le gusta beber cuando come lasagna? Um, no come lasagna. Es este tea tea and um, Jamaica. Okay. Yeah. Uh Jamaican rose tea. Uh -huh. Jamaican rose tea. Jamaica. Sí, es como rosa de Jamaica, té de rosa uh -huh. de Jamaica. Jamaican rose tea. Very good. Yeah, very nice. So um, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a great combination, you know, lasagna and Jamaican roast tea. Very good. Thank you very much, Flor. How about in the case of um, Connie? How about you, Connie? What is your favorite food? And what is one detail that you have or that you know about yourself when you have your favorite food? Good evening. Mm -hmm. My favorite food is um, China work. Uh oh. Uh, I like the pupusas, cheese pupusas, mm -hmm. pupusa cheese and beans. Um, for my day off is uh, chicken soup and caluco. <laughs> oh, okay. Very nice. I drink the, I drink the Coca Cola or oh, what I, I put. When I go the the caluco for chicken soup, mm -hmm. maybe take one beer. Oh, okay. All right, that's nice. You know, sometimes there there are soups that are better accompanied by a beer. Because, for example, um, I don't know how you guys know it, but sopa de pata, you know, the the the, the greasy one. I feel like that's way better when you have it with a beer because it, it's very greasy. So the beer will help you to like, you know, decrease the amount of, or like to swallow or wash off the amount of grease that it has. And of course, some chicken soups are also very greasy. So when you have those chicken soups, um, having a beer would be really recommended. Um, so yeah, that's great. Sounds, sounds as, you know, like you, yes, Connie. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And uh, yeah, China Walk. You mentioned China Walk in the beginning. It's also uh, a very good restaurant. You know, they have some very good dishes there. So pretty cool. Very, very good choice. All right. How about in the case of uh, Angel Pineda? In your case, Angel, what is your favorite food? And what is one detail that you know about yourself when you have your favorite food? And my favorite uh, my favorite food is uh oh Chinese food. Chinese food? Uh, yes, and um, chicken uh only pechuga. 
Mm -hmm. The breast. Uh, with I like drink uh, uh, with coffee or coke. Oh, okay, great. So yeah, coffee or coke. Um, well, with that kind of food, I feel like you know it would be way better to have some coke than coffee because it's like hot food. Uh, but still, you know, uh, for for prefer preferences, there are of course colors. And I like so much uh it's pupusas. Uh cheese and, and beans. Great, very good. Yeah. I mean I think like there is no Salvadorian that says that he or she doesn't like pupusas, you know, like uh it's basically a staple. I know that there might be someone that doesn't like them that much, but having pupusas is something that we have been used to and we all um have like that desire sometimes to have our graved pupusas so yeah very good thank you thank you have you uh, sorry angel for sharing um how about we now hear from cindy in your case cindy what is your favorite food and what is one detail that you know about yourself when you know when you have your favorite food okay actually i love pupusas uh, revueltas with uh, curtido and uh -huh. sauce match. Okay, very um, good. It's more curtido and sauce. <laughs> Than pupusas. Yes. Yeah. Um, two or three, four, three days for um, a week. Mm -hmm. You have pupusas. Yes, and I love a uh, three, one dollar. Mm, okay. Yeah, I mean those they are tiny they are tiny, yeah, they are tiny sometimes, but they are so enjoyable. They are like, you know, the ones that are like almost orange, you know, because they have something different, I feel, in the uh, in the recipe, but they are very tasty. So yeah, I totally understand. And you have two dollars of those, right? <laughs> um sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. So and yeah. with with um Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola or cola champagne? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that sounds yes. pretty cool. Sounds pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, in my case, um, I am basically the same. I have a person near my house who she sells pupusas, uh, enchiladas, um, yuca in different ways. Yuca sancochada in, in frita. She also makes um, papitas or french fries and um, pastelitos. So she like, you know, she cooks a lot of things. So that's basically the place where me, my sisters, and my girlfriend go to whenever we don't want or we don't know what to eat. And there is always a good option. So the good thing about that is that this lady, she's a friend of mine since I was very young. So um, she like listens to us. You know, we are like the, 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 the favorite clients that she has. So she basically complies everything that we ask. The other day, uh, we told her that it would be amazing if she had drinks. So now she has a full refrigerator with Coca Colas, Pepsi's, uh, cola, cola champans, and everything. Like she even has um, some sueros. So when we are hangover on Saturday, we go there, and she has you know electrolyte. So it's it's just an amazing place to go. Um, we spend hours and hours there. Sometimes we go on Saturdays around 5 p.m. and we don't come home until like nine or something. So yeah, it's a it's a really nice place to go and. Uh, it's great when you have people around you like that, you know, that they listen to your needs or to your desires. So it's it's a pretty cool thing. So, yeah. And I share this because, well, we have um, pupusas. The, the, when we go crazy, when we go together and we go crazy is when she has oranjal. I don't know if you guys have, you know, that if you like that soda. But when she has oranjal, we just we all go crazy about it. But yeah, well. Uh, let's move on and let's see. How about in the case of Carmen? In your case, Carmen, what is your favorite food and what is one detail that you have when you have your favorite food? Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I have a lot of favorite foods. But my favorite, favorite food is the Mexican food. And I love drinking coffee all the time. Oh, okay. Great. That is very nice. 
Are you feeling feeling better today, Carmen, from your sickness? Sorry. Are you feeling better today? Se siente mejor ahora? Um yes, teacher. Okay, great. Very good. It's nice to Thank know. You. You're very welcome. Thank okay. you. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's uh, nice. Mexican food, that is another of the staples that uh, we have many Mexican restaurants in our country. And there are, you know, many options that we can have of Mexican food around us. So, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And, of course, it's really, really tasty as well. I hope that you like a spicy food, you know, that you like to add some um, pepper into it. Because without the hot sauce, Mexican food is not necessarily Mexican food. Um, so yeah, but well, um, so guys, we're going to move on now into the topic for tonight, which is going to be, we're going to start with this adverb of power, or adverb power, which basically what it does, it helps us understand a little bit in a clearer way what I told you about yesterday. Sí, eso es básicamente lo que les dije, ¿verdad? Ayer. Um, a ver, aquí... Estos tres, si ustedes se fijan, o sea, son como bien random los iconos que usan para representarlos porque, pues, como les decía, son muy, muy similares en su significado. La diferencia que va a tener, por lo general, va a ser como la preferencia que la persona tenga. Ahora, en el extremely, claro, ¿verdad? Tenemos el pulgar arriba porque, pues, un extremely es algo que, pues, es como extremadamente así. Entonces, significa que, pues, va más allá de lo que se espera. Luego, el fairly... Es así como que, pues sí, ¿verdad? Lo justo, o sea, cumple con, con lo que se esperaba y es lo que les decía. O sea, algo que sí, perdón, alcanza, pero no necesariamente sobra cuando se tiene un fairly. Y el somewhat, pues que es el pues más o menos así. Sí, somewhat, más o menos en cierta forma. Muy bien. Entonces, este es el adverb power. De esto creo que ya no es necesario que nos paremos tanto a hablar acerca de esto. Ahora tenemos acá las conjunctions. Conjunctions, ahorita vamos a ver eh, básicamente cuatro, son las como más comunes. Dos son las que vamos a ver muy, muy a menudo, pero eh, las otras dos de vez en cuando nos las vamos a encontrar por ahí. A ver, tenemos entonces, the conjunctions that go in the middle are but and and. But, what are the difference between the two? Well, but is normally used when we are going to introduce or we introduce an idea that has a possible, a positive meaning. So what it means is that I say something nice about a city and then I introduce an idea that has something negative in it. So it's, for example, it's an exciting city. That is something positive. Eso es algo positivo, algo bueno acerca de la ciudad. But then the next idea It's negative. It's something that I don't see as the best. So the whole the whole sentence will be, it's an exciting city, but the weather is bad. Sí, es una ciudad eh, emocionante, pero el clima es malo. Entonces, cuando utilizamos ese but o el pero, significa que estamos incluyendo una característica que no necesariamente nos hace sentir como que es algo bueno, ¿verdad? Como algo que nosotros miremos como algo positivo acerca de este lugar. So, it's an exciting city, but the weather is bad. All right. Then we have and. And basically is used when we have two ideas that are following the same line. So, we would say it's a big city and it's not too crowded. See, it's a big city And it's not too crowded. So both ideas, both parts of the sentence are positive. We say that when it's a big city, it means that, you know, it's it's something that I see as a nice thing. Um, I like the fact that it's a big city. And if then I say it's not too crowded, then it means that, you know, I also like that fact. Ahora bien, esta and se puede utilizar cuando estamos mencionando dos cosas negativas también. O sea, podríamos decir... It's a crowded city and the weather is bad. En ese caso estamos haciendo una crítica completa, ¿verdad? Toda la oración, todo lo que dijimos es una crítica hacia la ciudad. Entonces podría ser como, it's a crowded city, sí, it's a crowded city and the weather is bad. 
significa que si yo digo algo como esto, estoy completamente en contra o completamente eh, criticando, ¿verdad? Lo que la ciudad, eh, pues, contiene, ¿sí? It's a crowded city and the weather is bad, ¿sí? Es una ciudad eh, muy poblada y el clima es malo. Entonces, se puede utilizar. No significa que and solo es para cosas positivas, no. Ese no va a ser el caso. Eh, sino que and lo que hace es simplemente conectar dos ideas que tienen como una misma línea, o sea, siguen, digamos, eh, el mismo sentido, ambas ideas. El but, por otro lado, lo que hace es como hacer un contraste. Una de las ideas puede ser negativa y la otra positiva, o una puede ser positiva y la otra negativa. Entonces, lo que hace simplemente es como generar ese contraste, ese escalón entre una y la otra. Aquí, por ejemplo, podríamos decir, the weather is bad, but the city is exciting. Sí, o sea, sería el clima es malo, pero la ciudad es emocionante. Entonces, eh, si lo digo de esa forma, lo que yo estoy haciendo es como tratando de rescatar la oración, tratando de rescatar no la oración, sino lo que estoy describiendo. Sí, porque en ese caso, o sea, menciono al final la cosa positiva, porque es como con lo que yo me quedo, ¿verdad? Me quedo con esa idea de que, o sea, aunque tenga esta parte mala, aunque el clima sea malo, pero es emocionante. Entonces esa parte gana, termina ganando, termina haciendo que al final de cuentas el clima no sea algo que interrumpa demasiado eh, como las bondades de la ciudad. Entonces, el but se utilizará de esa forma, positivo, negativo, negativo, positivo, entonces para pues básicamente generar ese contraste, and se va a utilizar casi como si fuese un puente, ¿verdad? Siguiendo como la misma idea de ambas, eh, en ambas partes de la oración. Ahora, vemos acá las que van al final. At the end, these ones are kind of there, there. ¿sí? Estas no son ni negativas ni positivas. Estas simplemente son como una forma de introducir una explicación o una idea que nosotros tenemos. O sea, yo digo, por ejemplo, it's a big city. It's not too big, though. ¿sí? O sea, el decir que no es este do al final... Eh, es muy común en, en hablantes del inglés, al menos en la actualidad, es algo que se ve muy a menudo, muchas personas utilizan este do, y a lo que esto va es a referirse básicamente a decir un aunque, ¿sí? Aunque, entonces esto en español a la hora de traducirlo deberíamos ponerlo al principio de la oración, debería decir, por ejemplo, aunque es grande, no es tan grande, ¿sí? Esa de, eso debería ser como la estructura en español. Aunque es grande, no es tan grande. It's a big city. It's not too big, though. Entonces, eh, como que tiene, digamos, esa pequeña variación eh, a la hora de traducirlo. Y por eso mismo, para muchos intérpretes, es una palabra compleja de traducir. El utilizar el do, porque esta siempre se va a poner al final de la oración. Imagínense ustedes que alguien esté diciendo... Um, I have had a bad experience coming to El Salvador. Mm, in the end, it was very good because of the pupusas, though. Sí, imagínense que alguien diga eso, o sea, dice, ¿verdad? Tuve una mala experiencia eh, viniendo a El Salvador. Al final fue buena debido a las pupusas, aunque, o sea, es como, ¿qué? Por eso mismo es complejo para muchos intérpretes el utilizar el do, porque debería ser... Aunque tuve una o he tenido una mala, mala experiencia viniendo a Salvador, es rescatable o es buena por las pupusas, por decir algo. O sea, simplemente un ejemplo, ¿verdad? Que se me acaba de ocurrir, pero así funcionaría. Entonces, si se pone al final ese do, se cambia por completo casi el significado de lo que se acaba de decir. Dime, Carlos. Entonces, el uso del do es más como, digamos, Mm, más como vulgo, no sé si me, me, me explico de la palabra, es como más casual o uh -huh. sí. dejarla ahí como, pero no tiene un significado, o si ponemos como que un significado más práctico, ¿cuál sería? Um, podría ser casi como decir a pesar de, sí, como a, a pesar de que es grande, no es tan grande, Por el, el, siguiendo ese ejemplo, ¿verdad? Sí, a pesar de que es grande, no es tan grande, pero Um, por ejemplo, en un caso o en un sentido de que sea una oración un tanto más formal, no sería recomendable utilizar el do, 
sería más bien, digamos, decir algo como utilizarlo al principio, sí, que es con el even though, sí, even though, que esto significa lo mismo, aunque even though it's a big city, it's not too big, sí, en una cuestión formal sonaría mucho mejor o sería mucho más, eh, mucho mejor visto que lo colocásemos así, even though it's a big city, it's not too big, sí, even though, ¿Qué significa lo mismo? O sea, aunque, sí. O sea, a la hora de traducirlo va a tener la, el mismo significado. Pero este do, bien, como tú dices, es como algo un tanto burdo, algo un tanto casual, más como, eh, digamos, de conversaciones así, en la calle, con amigos. O sea, estamos, qué, qué sé yo, criticando algo, hablando acerca de la selecta, por ejemplo. Um, sí, o sea, we get excited, but we know we're not going to win, though. Sí, entonces ahí, ¿verdad? Al final está ese dos simplemente como para decir, o sea, que a pesar que, que, que nos emocionamos, sabemos que no vamos a ganar, por decir algo. Entonces, pero eh, por eso mismo en, en situaciones que sean más formales, no es recomendable, ¿verdad? La utilización del dos sino que mejor decir even do. Y caso similar se da con el however, ¿sí? However es eh, casi que decir a pesar de esto, ¿sí? It's a big city, it's not too big, however. Sí, a pesar que es una ciudad grande, no es tan grande. Así se entendería, ¿verdad? El however. El however es mucho más inclinado a significar a pesar de, y el do es mucho más inclinado a significar aunque. Pero ambos tienen como una, como una, 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 una forma muy similar al final de cuentas. However, sí es un poco más de personas como educadas, digamos, de personas que eh, si están teniendo una conversación así coloquial, eh, pueda que utilicen más fácil. However, quedó, pero eh, no es una que vayan a escuchar ustedes todo el tiempo, porque si estamos hablando de una conversación así, ¿verdad? Eh, educada, formal, pues ya les digo, buscaremos otras opciones antes que utilizar el however. O podríamos colocar este however al principio. However, I consider, o sea, ya como, como buscar una idea diferente. However, I consider it's a big city, but it's not too big, por ejemplo. Podría ser así, pero ahí ya vamos incluso incluyendo, ¿verdad? Esta conjunción al, um, al medio. Pero, entonces, esto va a ser eh, como simplemente una idea o una forma de agregar un comentario que no es ni positivo ni negativo. Simplemente es mi percepción acerca de algo. Sí, para eso es que utilizaremos, ¿verdad? Eh, el do o el however. Claro, mucho más común que utilicemos do, mucho más común que escuchemos eh, oraciones con do, pero son principalmente utilizadas en situaciones, ¿verdad? Más, eh, más del día a día, más coloquiales que situaciones formales. Tenemos un ejemplo más. The dress is nice. It's too expensive, though. Sí. Y aquí, esto, si, si lo ven ustedes, ¿verdad? Eh, tenemos como un balance, sí. The dress is nice. It's too expensive, though. Entonces, como que a pesar, o aunque el vestido está bonito, está muy caro. Entonces, es como que, o sea, sí, cierto, está bonito, pero está muy caro. Así que, pues, me quedo así, ¿verdad? O sea, es mi opinión. Creo que, aunque esté bonito, no vale la pena comprarlo. So, yeah. That would be uh, how these work. Now, I want you guys, I want to hear some examples to come, that come from you, mainly using these two. Sí, así que ahorita tratemos de escribir oraciones o generar oraciones o ejemplos utilizando estas dos. Quisiera ver una del but y una de and. Sí, una de but y una de and. Las otras no necesariamente las vamos a estar practicando porque, como les digo, no son eh, como comunes, no es algo que vamos a, a usar nosotros todo el tiempo es más que todo algo que debemos reconocer, algo que debemos entender a qué se refiere cuando alguien dice do o however, como les digo, el however no es no tan común, es mucho más común que alguien diga do al final de algo, like it's a big city, it's not a big do, entonces como una explicación nada más. Eh, por eso mismo no quiero que nos quebremos tanto la cabeza con el do, sino que vamos a hacerlo más con el but and end, ¿sí? Así que, eh, ya. Yeah. Uh, if you want, I will give you... One minute, I'm going to grab some water and I'll, I'll call back to see the examples that we have. So yeah, examples with but and end.
Okay, so what examples do we have? So here we have one from Javier. The winter is good, but I don't like the rain. Great, very good. So only one thing, it's with A, rain like that. However, the rest is great, very, very good. The winter is good, but I don't like the rain. All right, pretty cool. That's a nice addition. Now, how about the rest of you guys? What examples do we have uh, for um, but or and? Mm, the dress is nice and it's very cheap. Oh, that's following everything positive. The dress is nice and it's very cheap. So yeah, that's positive, positive. So Yapango is a large municipality, but Okay, aquí sería una cosita nada más un cambio sería but it has a lot of traffic. But it has a lot of traffic. Uh it's a good car but is very expensive. Muy bien, la única diferencia, lo único que deberíamos tener aquí diferente sería el it al principio de cada uno, ¿sí? It is a good car. Ahorita voy con usted, Pony. It is a good car. Well, sorry, car. Um, but it's um very expensive. Very expensive. Okay. El it. Siempre acordémonos que vamos a necesitar, verdad, colocar un sujeto. El inglés no porte, no posee esa característica de que el español sí de el sujeto tácito. Muy bien. Uh, Connie, what are your examples? Pupusa is delicious, but this is small. Oh, good. Very good. Do we have one example with end? Uh, the city is small. Um, not, uh, I'm not cleaning. Mm, okay. The city is small. Podemos decir the city is small and dirty. Sí. Oh, and not clean. Está bien. So the city is small and dirty. Okay, great. Um, how about Cerro Verde? Okay, Cerro Verde is incredible place, but is very far away. Good, very good. The only thing here, Edwin, is we have to separate far from away. It's very far away. Uh, so yeah, Cerro Verde is an incredible place, but it's very far away. Uh, I love lasagna and Chinese food. Great, very good. Here we have a connection. I love lasagna and Chinese food. It's a good car, but it's very expensive. Um, yeah, you can also do it like that. It's a good car, uh, but it's very expensive. <laughs> good. Um, it's a car, very nice, um, but it's very expensive. Ok, recordemos también que los adjetivos en inglés van antes del de nombre. Entonces sería, it's a very nice car. Sí, it's a very nice car, but it's very expensive. El resto, excelente. Solamente car es que tendría que estar justo antes de la coma. En el caso de la oración que nos mandó Ángel. Pero el resto, muy bien. Um, I didn't study English hard, but I speak, very, I speak well. Ok, great. Good on you. Good on you. Um, how about I have a house, but I don't, I haven't moved. Great. I have a house, but I haven't moved. Uh, so yeah, the only difference here, or the only thing is that house, remember house is spelled in a, in a little bit of a different way. It will be like this house. The rest is just great. Okay. Um, let's see. Summer is beautiful, but it's a bit hot. Summer is beautiful, but it's a bit hot. Ok, veo que una cosa que sí todos están dejando de lado es que no están poniendo la coma, o varios al menos están dejando de lado es no poner la coma. Then we have, he has a dog and a cat. Great. Thank you, Carlos David. He has a dog and a cat. She's a nurse, but she is a doctor. She's not a nurse, sorry. She's not a nurse, but she is a doctor. That is a great example. I love the way that looks. Uh, she is not a nurse, but she is a doctor. Okay, then we have the jacket is nice and the right size. Oh, good. Both are good details about the jacket. Then we have the music is good, but 
the volume is high. Great, very good, Cindy. Those are amazing examples. The jacket is nice and the right size. The music is good, but the volume is high. Suena casi como si fuese un poema. Okay, then we have, my bag is very nice and very expensive. Good, Maria, very good. My bag is very nice and very expensive. And then we have, my house is big and beautiful. My house is big and beautiful. Great, very good. Um, Carlos has a red car and a yellow bike. Oh, great, very good, Eric. Carlos has a red car and a yellow bike. And then, um, okay, aquí solo sería dos. Sí, es la única diferencia. Recordemos también eso, dos. Para hablar acerca de los plurales, sería dos. Sí, those shoes are beautiful. And, okay, aquí podríamos tener también una pequeña diferencia porque sería... Um, Those shoes are beautiful and podría ser and uh, not too expensive. Sí, not too expensive porque recordemos que ambos detalles deberían ser positivos para que eh, funcione con el and. Sí, those shoes are beautiful and not too expensive. Porque si yo digo those shoes are beautiful sería but too expensive. Si sí, es como decir verdad que son bonitos y sí, están bonitos los zapatos pero muy caros, sí. Los shoes are beautiful, but too expensive. Ok, la siguiente. Um, soda is delicious, but it's not healthy. Great example, Javier. Soda is delicious, but it is not healthy. Ok, solo nos faltó una L, pero... Ooh, we're going to excuse it, ok. I love to dance, but I can't. Ok, good example, represents me. I love to dance, but I can't. Great, that is a, a very good example. Muy bien. Ahora, lo que yo quería o quisiera más que todo es escucharlos a ustedes. Así que ahora les voy a preguntar uno cada uno, ¿sí? Porque quiero escuchar cómo lo dicen. Así que vamos a ver. Cindy, usted ya envió los suyos, así que veamos. Escuchemos aunque sea uno de los ejemplos. Um, can you please say one to the class? Ok. The jacket is nice and the right size. Ok, very good. That really sounds like a poem. Okay, how about um, Edwin? Okay, uh, this is Roberto. It's an incredible place, but it's pretty far away. Okay, very good. Thank you. How about Floor? Can we hear one example from you, Floor? But uh, it has, mm -hmm. it has, yes, it, it has, has a lot of traffic. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, Carlos David, how about you? Mm, I like ice cream and cake. I like ice cream and cake. Great. Very good. How about Jay-Z Acosta? Teacher, um, I, I have a problem with the internet, and entonces acabo de entrar. Oh, okay, no problem then, sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry. Um, Carmen, in your case, can we please hear one of your examples? Hi, teacher. Hey there. Um, sorry, I'm working, but oh, um, okay. my example is um, I love to dance, but I can't. Okay, great. Very good. Thank you. Um, how about you, Angel? Can we hear one of your examples? Okay, teacher. Uh, it's a car very nice, but it's very uh, too expensive. Okay, the car is very nice, but it's too expensive. Um, Ana Lucia, how about you? Can we please hear one example from you? Yes, she is not a nurse, but she is a doctor. Great, that is a great example. How about Maria Martinez? Can we please hear one of your examples? Yes, teacher. Um, 
One minute, please. It's okay. This is arriba, creo. And let's just see. Okay. My bag is pretty nice and very expensive. All right, great, very good. Um, how about my Lima? Yeah, hi, good evening. Um, my friend says, I have a dress and my shoes for my date. Oh, I have a dress and my shoes for my date. Great, very, very nice. How about Eric? Can we please hear one example coming from you, Eric? Okay, Carlos has a red car and a yellow bike. Carlos has a car and a yellow bike. Great. Connie, how about you? The park is clean, but it's very small. The park is clean, but it's very small. Great. Yeah, you said ya me había dado uno, ahora que me acuerdo, pero igual. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Claudia, how about you? Can we please hear one from you? Sure. I love lasagna and Chinese food. And my house is small, but it's a pretty big house. All right, very good. I love lasagna and Chinese food. My house is a small, but it's a pretty house. Great. Um, y en ese caso, por ejemplo, esto que usted dice se toma como algo positivo. Se entiende al final como algo positivo porque estamos hablando acerca de que but it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty house significa, o sea, que con eso me quedo, ¿verdad? Con que es una casa linda. A pesar que es pequeña, es linda. So, yes, very good. Ok. Ok, you're very welcome. Um, Maria Fuentes, how about you? Can we please hear one example coming from you? Ok, coach. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Can I can I use two conjunctions yeah. in the same paragraph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's possible. Okay. Okay, the example is I went to the supermarket and I bought many things, but I forgot to buy my chamomile tea. Okay, great. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah. algo así me estaba imaginando, porque sí, así es como la forma más fácil, ¿verdad? Utilizar primero and y luego el but al final. So, yes, you did great. Very good. That is a, a okay. great, great question, including both conjunctions in the same sentence. All right. Okay. How about... You. You're very welcome. How about Javier Ramos? Hi. Good evening, teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. I for example, uh, uh, soda is delicious, but uh, it's not healthy. Health. No, healthy. Okay. Healthy. Soda is Il, um, con N, mm -hmm. los planes de rendero, it's very nice, please. And um, uh, excellent, please, uh, to eat pupusas. Okay. I have never been to Los Planes. I have heard so many good things about it. Um, but yeah, as I am from here, from San Miguel, uh, you know, it's like a little bit difficult for me. But one day, I know that one day I will go there and uh, see what it's all about. Because I have heard so many good things about Los Planes, but honestly, I have never had a chance to, to go. Um, but yeah, one day, one day I'll try them. Okay, how about um, Javier Rivera? Hello. Hello there. Uh, um, the winter is good. Se nos fue, Javier. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Okay. The winter is good, but I don't like the rain. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that was your... Uh, okay, cool. Um, How about in the case of... Uh, I was missing someone over here. Let's see, where did you go? It's Oscar. How about you, Oscar? Hi, teacher. Hello there. Uh, I need to... I need to buy... I, I need to buy a new car. But I don't have money. Okay. That is a very good example. I need to buy a new car, but 
I don't have money. Of course, in the case of the grammatical structure, now it is not the best example when it comes to seeing it from you know the um the living point of view. Okay, how about Christina? Anna Christina, how about you? What is your example or one example that we can get to hear from you? Creo que el micrófono no nos funciona porque veo que lo tiene encendido, pero no lo logro escuchar. Yeah, we can, uh, maybe we can try in a bit, porque sí, veo que está encendido el micrófono, pero acá a este lado no logro escucharle. Okay, I like listening to music, but I like dancing more. Oh, that's great. That is a great example. Okay, very good. Very, very good. Okay, bueno. Vamos a ver, tenemos entonces acá eh, una conversación más, sí, que vamos a estar practicando las dos en un momento. Ya les dije, ¿verdad? El día de ayer. La forma en la que vamos a hacerlo es tener una captura, vamos a los breakout rooms, en los breakout rooms uno del grupo que quedemos ahí va a tener que compartir la pantalla y pues esa persona ayuda con mostrar, ¿verdad? A los demás la conversación. Muy bien, en este caso esta trata acerca de, um, básicamente, un lugar, una vez más, sí, pero ahora es acerca como de ir a buscar cosas, ¿verdad? So, like, what should I do there? Or should I see there? That's the title of the, of the conversation. And here we have Thomas and Elena. Those are the two people taking part of the conversation. And the conversation is supposed to go as following. Can you tell me a little about Mexico City? Sure, I can. What would you like to know? Well, What's a good time to visit? I think you can go anytime. The weather is always nice. Oh, good. And what should I see there? Well, you should definitely visit the National Museum and go to places or go to the Palace of Fine Arts. And what else? Oh, you shouldn't miss the Pyramid of the Sun. It's very interesting. It all sounds really exciting. Ok, entonces esa es la conversación que tenemos ahorita. Una vez más, sí, una vez más y luego vamos a los record rooms. So, can you tell me a little about Mexico City? Sure, I can. What would you like to know? Well, what's a good time to visit? I think you can go anytime. The weather is always nice. Oh, good. And what should I see there? Well, you should definitely visit the National Museum and go to the Palace of Fine Arts. And what else? You shouldn't miss the Pyramid of the Sun. It's very interesting. It sounds really exciting. Muy bien. Entonces, esta conversación, si pueden, ahorita, ¿verdad? Obtengamos la captura de ella. Y ahorita les muestro la que teníamos el día de ayer. Vamos a hacer una pequeña práctica también de esta. Antes de ir a los record rooms. Sí, esta era acerca de It's a Fairly Big City. So, the way it's supposed to go is as following. So, where are you from, Carmen? I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Wow, I've heard that's a really nice city. Yeah, it is. The weather is great, and there are some fantastic beaches just outside the city. Is it expensive there? No, it's not very expensive. Prices are pretty reasonable. How big is the city? It's a fairly big city, but it's not too big. It sounds perfect to me. Maybe I should plan a trip there sometime. Muy bien. So those are the two conversations. Um, do you guys have any questions about any of the words or sentences in the questions? Okay. So if you don't, uh, if you don't, Then I will open the rooms right now. You, uh, as you guys have already heard, you know, just try to um, share your screen. One of you guys only. And uh, yeah, good luck. See you in the rooms in a bit. You can start joining now. Good evening. Uh,
Hai. Hai. Eh. Alguien tomó captura de pantalla. Yo tomé, pero de la segunda, no sé, la primera, si alguien tomó. La de esta semana, la de la primera La que, de... la primera Creo que... que, No, la de ahora, creo que es. sí, yo le tomé, qué pena. Y quiero ver si se las comparto. Connie, Can you tell me, can you tell me about Mexico City? sure, I can. What would you like to know? Well, what's good time to visit? I think you can go anytime. The weather is always nice. ¿Quién? Si quieren inicio yo con no sé quién, con alguien. Okay, soy yo Elena entonces. Ok, Elena. Voy a hacer tomas. Ok. Bye. Uh, so, where are you from, Carmen? I am from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Wow, I heard that a really nice city. ¿Quién seguía? Yo, No, usted, siempre. cosa, lo vamos Ah, vaya. a hacer completa. Vaya. Y después les damos chance a ellos para que practiquen. Vaya. Yeah, is the water is green and there are some fantastic beach beaches just outside the city. It's expensive there. No, it's not very expensive price are very reasonable. How big is the city? It's fairly by city. But it's not too big. It sounds perfect to me. Maybe I should plan a trip there sometime. Vaya, hoy va este Marilla con Ángel. Y creo que nos va a quedar alguien pendiente. Ok. Eh... Y estaría another conversation, right? Yes. Ok. okay. Eh, voy yo ahorita entonces. Uh, so, where are you from? I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Wow, I've heard that a really nice city. Yeah, is it? The weather is great, and there are some fantastic beaches just outside the city. Is it expensive there? Hello. Hola, ¿me escucha? Sí, sí, le toca sí. a usted. Ah, ok. No, it's not. No, it's not very expensive. Price are pretty reasonable. How big, how big is the city? It's a fairly big city, but isn't not it's not too big. It sounds perfect to me. Maybe or I I should plan plan a trip there sometime. Okay. okay. Este, ¿cuántos somos? Solo cuatro. Falta alguien más. Aparte de nosotros cuatro. No logro ver yo aquí cuántos somos. O Ana Cristina, eso. Ana Cristina. Yo soy Ajá, María Esther era la que estaba ahorita con usted. Ah, okay, uh -huh. Ana Cristina. Ana Cristina, hola. Con la que falta. Hola. Ana. Creo que no está. Va, entonces. Sí, está, pero creo que no se le escucha el micrófono a ella. Mm, creo que sí. Bueno, entonces vamos a bajar a la siguiente y ahora denle ustedes primero. Ok. Eh, ahí está. Eh, can you tell me uh, a little about Mexico City? Mexico City. 
sure I can. What should you like to know? Well, what's a good time to visit? I think you can go anything. The weather is always nice. Oh, good. And what show I see there? Well, you should definitely visit the National Museum and go to the Palace of Fine Art. And what else? You shouldn't miss the, no sé cómo se pronuncia, pyramid, pyramid. Para, of the pyramid. Story. Very interesting. It all sounds really exciting. Excellent. Okay, let me see, Flor. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me a little about, a little about Mexico City? Sorry, I can't. What, what would you like it to know? Well, what's a good time to visit? I think you can go a night. A night the water is all good night. Oh, good. And what should I see there? Well, you should definitely visit the Natation Museum and go to the Palanx of Fine Art. And what else? Oh, you should not miss the pyramid of the sun is very interesting. It all sounds really exciting. Creo que terminamos y Ana no está. No ¿Eh? le sirve el. No, es que el dice micrófono. que no le sirve el micrófono, dijo en un mensaje. Mm, bueno. Eh, bueno, en lo que no terminamos, este, si quieren nos turna. Bueno, así estuvo. Sacó. Okay, okay. So, uh, great job, guys. I like the way in which we're communicating because, yeah, that's the idea, you know, of having breakout rooms because what we need or what we are trying to do is, as I said uh, on Monday, try to create community, try to work together. And that was great. I love, you know, how you guys were able to help one another. Uh, and yeah, let's keep it up. Let's continue on uh, working. Of course, this is a long journey, a long process. And um, well, what I can say by now is that I can tell you guys are doing great and that you're putting a lot of effort into it. So let's continue the same way. Um, I am feeling great, you know, with this team. So yeah, but well, for now, hey. all we have to do is, oh yes, hey, Cindy. Sir. Yes. Uh, how do you say uh, pyramide? Pyramid. Pyramid. Yeah. Um, la otra que, museo, la, hola. Museo. Museum. And definitivamente. Definitely. Definitely. La otra que escuché que también les estaba más o menos ahí causando problemitas era reasonable. O la, the prices are reasonable. Sí, esa es otra. Pero sí, definitely, pyramid, museum, and uh, definitely, and, and, and uh, reasonable. Existing, yeah. existing the el último. Exciting. Exciting. exciting, yeah, exciting, exciting, exciting. Mm -hmm. emocionante. So, Teacher, yeah. yes. Dijo pyra, pyra, pyramid, 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 mm -hmm. pyramid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pyramid. 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 Ahora. Pyramid. Ajá. También pueden a veces escuchar el eh, que digan pyramid, pero yo siento que eso es más complicado decir pyramid. Sí, por eso es a veces mejor el pyramid. Pero sí, también algunos, pyramid. ajá, se puede escuchar que digan pyramid, pero es, como le digo, más complejito decirlo así. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're welcome. Pero bueno, um, so yeah, for now, all I have left to do is to tell you guys, thank you very much for your attention and participation tonight. I will see you Friday. Remember, tomorrow we don't have classes. We're going to have classes on Friday because tomorrow okay. is, uh, yeah, because it's the day of the dead, we have a day off. So yeah, um, thank you guys very much. See you Friday. 
Have a great night. See you, Friday. Bye -bye. See you, Richard. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Have a good night. Yeah. See you.